Hello, my bomb followers and module masters, and today I am here with another Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes modded module tutorial, and today I am here with the blue button. The blue button does not require any edgework, so we can go ahead and get started as soon as we get our bomb. So this is the blue button. It consists of a button, it is blue, and a scrolling display of polyominoes. A polyomino is basically a shape that is cons that is made up by a different number of squares. So you see how this magenta shape is made up of five squares, this red shape is made out of three, the science shape is made out of two squares. The blue button is a five stage module, so let's go ahead and take this module one stage at a time. Note the cyclic sequence C of polyominoes and their colors. Without rotating them, place them on the grid Z, five tiles wide and four tiles tall, such that same color polyominoes do not touch orthogonally. The grid wraps around in both directions. So what this is telling us to do is to make a 5x4 grid that is five wide and four tall, and place all of these scrolling polyominoes on that grid. This is why I have the LEGO Digital Designer here. You may have noticed it open while I was doing the intro. So we're going to take all of these pieces and stick them on the grid. The way I would read this out as a diffuser to an expert would be, so we have a green piece that is up, uh, dot up right right right. A sign piece that is dot down. Yellow, dot right right up right. Magenta, dot down right right right. And red, dot right up. So we're going to take these pieces and put them in this grid. So how do we do this? To start, you can place any your first polyomino in the grid anywhere. The grid wraps around indefinitely, so you can have any permutation of this grid, and you will still get a valid grid. So let's go ahead and place this yellow shape in here. It was dot right right up right. Now, because the grid wraps around in both directions, an example of something valid you can put in this grid is here, then go right, it wraps around from the right edge to the left edge, so it goes to here. Right, up, right. And this is completely valid. Now, we need to place the remaining pieces inside of the grid, such that we get a valid formation of shapes. So the most immediate thing to notice here is that we have a bit of a close part here. And to fill this part, I think we're going to need to use the cyan and red pieces. Because the magenta piece can't fit anywhere in here, even with wrapping. And the green can't fit in here either. So this requires us to use the red and cyan piece. The red piece can be used to fill this gap, and the cyan piece can be used to fill this gap. Next, I want to look at this part. So all we have looked are the green and magenta pieces. So, how do we put these in the grid? The magenta piece, the senior magenta piece cannot start here. Or if we go down, it can't go right. Additionally, the magenta piece cannot start in any of these squares because going down and right doesn't lead to a valid solution because the entire top row is filled with squares. Which means that the only valid configuration has to be this. Because putting the magenta anywhere else would lead into bumping into the science square. However, this leads to the green not having any valid place to put it in. Which means something is wrong here. So let's show a different configuration of shapes. Maybe the red piece goes here. We have to deal with the green, the magenta, and the cyan piece now. So, how do we do this? Let's try putting the green piece here. Yes, I see the solution now. We can put the magenta piece here. And the cyan piece here. And this is our valid grid. Now, it doesn't have to look exactly like this. You can shift any column in any direction you want. You can shift any row up or down. The grid is valid either way. 
We're not going to need this grid until stage 5, so let's put it away. Tap the button to progress to stage 2. Find three consecutive polyominoes J, K, L, and C, which was this cyclic series of polyominoes, whose colors occur consecutively in this cyclic sequence of N colors. Tap the button when Q, the color after the one corresponding to L, is highlighted. So what this means is that in this sequence of however many colors that is currently scrolling, there is going to be a sequence of three colors that match the order that we have listed here. So we can have a sequence of yellow, magenta, red. We can have a sequence of red, green, cyan, and so on. And to progress past this stage, we need to tap the button when the color after the sequence of three is displayed. Now let's say that I was a silly goose and didn't note down the sequence of colors that stage. Oh no, what do I do? I don't have the colors. Am I just screwed? No. Hold the button to return to stage one at any time. So now we can hold the button, it tells us the model resets, and now we're back to the sequence of colors. Alright, let's note down the sequence this time, you silly goose. What did you do it the first time? Tap the button, and now we're back to this. Now do note that we're going to need the number of colors that show up, so it is best to just note down the entire sequence of colors that shows up. We're going to start past this magenta. Yellow, red. Yellow, cyan. Yellow, magenta. Back to yellow, red. So this is our sequence of colors. There's six colors, so we're going to note that the N is equal to six. We'll need this later. So J, K, and L are the three colors in this sequence that are also present in this sequence. So let's try and find this sequence of colors. We have yellow, magenta, yellow, which is not it. Red, yellow, cyan doesn't match up. Cyan, yellow, magenta. Ah, we do have a sequence of cyan, yellow, magenta in our string from last stage. So we're going to note down that J is cyan, because that's the first one. K is yellow. And L is magenta. We're also going to do the color after this sequence of cyan yellow magenta, which is another yellow. Then we're going to tap the button when this yellow appears, cyan yellow magenta, and then tap the button. And now we have mathematical equations. The absolute difference between each equation's true result and the one shown are n, d, x, m in that order. Tap the button at times. We're not going to need this anymore, so we're going to go ahead and delete it. And we're also not going to need this anymore, so I will delete it. So, first of all, let's note down what equations we have this way. We have 8 times 6 equals 45. 27 plus 31 equals 53. 55 plus 67 equals 130. 17 plus 11 equals 34. So, we're going to calculate the difference between the true result and the one shown. So the difference between 8 times 6 and 45 is 3. The difference between 27 plus 31 and 53 is 5. The difference between 55 plus 67 and 130 is 8. And then finally, the difference between 17 plus 11 and 34 is 6. Now, these are shown in the order of N, D, X, and M. But wait a minute. This sequence is cycling around in any order and doesn't indicate whether it starts or ends. So how do I figure out what's assigned to N, D, X, and M? Well, we know from last stage that N is equal to 6. And the equations are shown to the order of n, d, x, and m. Which means that... Let me put this back and then put these below it. This is equal to n. The next one after n in order is d, then x, then m. So we're going to note then that d is equal to 3, x is equal to 5, and m is equal to 8. Tap the button m times. So we're going to tap the button eight times, 
and then we're going to go to the next part of the mod. I'm going to delete this stuff because we no longer need it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now we have a sequence of suits with different villains. We're going to need to swap this series of suits to the goal configuration. So let's go ahead and first of all get our goal configuration. So swap the suit such that the diamond is at position D. From last stage we know that D is equal to 3. And we're going to note down a sequence of 4 spots. So we know that D is 3, meaning the diamond should be in position 3. The remaining suits are in order P, according to Table 2. Let's go to Table 2. We're going to look up the color Q in this table, which is yellow. And then we're given this pattern of suits. Club, Heart, Spade. From left to right, this is the order of suits in the remaining slot, skipping over the diamond. So we have Club, Heart, Spade. And this is our goal configuration. What we have initially on the display is Diamond Heart, Spade, Club. Now we need to swap the initial to the goal, but how do we do this? To perform an action, press the button four times with time intervals R, A, B between presses. So the time between the first press and the second press is R, the time between press 2 and 3 is A, and the time between presses 3 and 4 is B. So we need to press the button with intervals between presses that are equal to, that have a relation between B and R and A and R. And this allows us to swap the positions on the display. This will make much more sense once I start actually tapping the button. So first of all, we need to actually find a sequence of swaps that gets our initial to the goal. I like to start by putting the edges into the position, so spade over here and club over here. We can swap three and four, which gets spade to its correct position. And since we need to get club over here, we need to swap two and three and one and two. Two and three swaps hearts and club to be clubs and hearts, and then one and two swaps diamond club to club diamond. And then just swap the middle two, two and three again. Delta, 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 and we have our final goal configuration. We're going to then submit after this. So, what, how do we swap these? If we look at our first swap, three and four, A is less than R and B is greater than R. So we need to find an A, sorry, an R, A, and B. That fulfills both these conditions. A is less than R, and R is less than B. So A is the smallest variable, then R, then, th uh, then B. So we're going to press the button, wait two seconds, press the button, wait one second, and press the button, and wait three seconds, and then press it again. So let's do this. One, two, one, one, two, three. And three and four are swap. It doesn't have to be in seconds, it just has to be in intervals of time that satisfy these conditions. We've done our first swap. Now let's reset our values of R, A, and B. Next we need swaps two and three. A is greater than R, and R is greater than B. So B is the smallest, R is the greatest, and A is Sorry, R is in the middle, and A is the greatest. So let's do this. We have 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, and 2 and 3 swap. Next, swap 1 and 2. A is less than R, and B is less than R. So we have these are reset our values. R is the greatest, and A and B are both less than R which follows this. So let's go ahead and press it. One, two, one, one. And one and two have swapped. And finally, we need to swap two and three again. 
which is B is less than R is less than A. So B less than R less than A. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1. And finally, we just have submit. But before we do this, convert the fillings left to right to numbers E, F, G, and H using table 3. So let's do this. So from left to right on the module, we have top right to bottom left slash, which corresponds to 2. Top left to bottom right slash, which corresponds to 1. Build, which corresponds to 0. And top right to bottom left, which corresponds to 2. Now we submit, which is A is greater than R and B is greater than R. So A and B are both greater than R. 1, 1, 2, 1, 2. And now we get to this part. It cycles between intervals of words, of letters even, and so, as you may expect, we're going to submit a word. So how in the name of Sandhill are we going to get a word out of this? Well, we're going to find S the X tile in K reading order. Within Z. And T, U, V, W, the next four tiles going right from X. So, we're going to find... First of all, we need to figure out what K is. K corresponds to our yellow tile. So, we're going to use the yellow tile to find our starting square, which is S. Then, X is equal to 5. So we need the fifth tile in reading order. If you remember, the yellow tile was dot right right up right. I'll control Z a little bit. Maybe you want to keep this in your notes for later usage. It was right right up right right. So this is first in reading order. This is second. This is third. This is fourth. And this is fifth. Because the tile initially looked like this. Dot right right up right. And this is dot right right up right. So this is first of reading order, which is this. This is second. This is third. This is fourth. This is fifth. Let's get rid of this. And now, we're looking for the fifth tile in reading order, which was this tile. If this is S, the next tile in reading order, which is the cyan tile, is T. This is U. This is B, and this is W. So let's go back and highlight S. Move S, T, U, and B down by E, F, G, and H respectively. So what this basically means, let me go back to our ending and configuration of stuff. We don't need these anymore. E, F, G, and H are basically offsets for the first four tiles. So we had an E of two. Which means we're going to take this tile and move down two to this tile. And we're going to note down the walls of this tile. Which basically means all of the adjacent edges of this tile that do not share the same color. Which is north, not west, not east, and south. Next, we're going to go from... S to T, which is the next tile in reading order from S. We're going to go down by one tile, which is this, and note down the adjacent tiles that do not share color with this tile, which are west, east, and south. We're going to go here to U. We're going to move down zero, which we just don't move at all, and look at the tiles that don't share the same color as this, which is north, west, and east, not south. Next tile, we're going down by two. And the edges that don't share colors are north, west, and east, not south. Then finally, we're going to our last cell, which you don't move down at all on the last one. So north, not west, not east, and south. So north and south is the final wall configuration we're going to note down. 
you should have the sequence of five walls. What we're going to do with these walls is compare them to table four. Using the walls, we're going to find the same cell in this grid that shares the same walls. So for north and south, this cell with the one papa in it has a wall to the north and a wall to the south, not one to the west or to the east. So this is the cell we're going to use. But wait, there's two letters. Which letter do I use? If the square that we used to get the walls was part of a pentomino, which means a square that a polynomial that had five pieces. So one, two, three, four, five. This yellow piece is a poly, uh, pentomino. This green piece and the magenta piece are pentominoes, while the red and cyan piece are not pentominoes. If the piece we used to get this square was a pentomino, we use the underline letter. If it wasn't, we use the ununderline. So let's go back and figure out if the squares are part of pentominoes. I'm going to mark the ones that were part of pentominoes with an asterisk and ones that weren't with a dot. So this was our starting cell, going down to Quinta Green, which was a pentomino, so we used this. We, next was this, going down by one. This is part of cyan, which is not a pentomino. Next we were here, which had an offset of zero, which means we're still at the magenta piece, which does have which is a pentomino. Then we're at this yellow piece, we went down to the red piece, which is not a pentomino. And then finally, the fifth piece, which we don't ever move, was part of the yellow piece, which is a pentomino. So now, we're going to convert these to letters. North-South with the pentomino is echo. West-East and South. West-East and South, but not North. And this cell was not a pentomino, so we used Lima. North, west, and east. North, west, east. It was a pentomino, so we use the underline letter, which is I. North, west, east again. This was not a pentomino, so we use the not underline letter, which is T. And then finally, north, south, pentomino, E. Which gives us the word elite. So now what we're going to do is tap the button when the highlighted section contains the letter we're trying to submit. So the first letter we need to submit is E. So we're going to wait until the first set of letters is highlighted, then the second set, which contains E, and then finally when E is highlighted, and then we do the same thing for the rest of the letters in our word. L I T Very well done. And that is a solved module. Let's do one more. And we're going to go through this faster this time. This is how the module will normally face. So first of all, let's get our set of pentominoes. Uh, polynominoes. We have... Oh boy, this is weird. We have a red that is dot right right. Magenta dot right 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 down. Then a cyan, which goes dot up right down right. Then a blue, which I'll come back to. And then finally a cyan, which goes dot down. So we have this blue piece, but we can't navigate to all tiles in one space. So let's just navigate to all of them eventually. Let's go start from here, dot left, up, up, down, left. And these are our pentominates. Polyominates, even. I get those confused a lot, I apologize. So now, let's erase our grid. And let's start putting spaces in this grid. One thing I want to note. You're placing the tiles in the grid as such that the same color polyominates do not touch on top of so these two cyan pieces cannot be adjacent to each other. I'm going to start with the blue piece because it's a little bit complex. So it was left, up, up, down, left. So left, up, up, 
down left. I'm going to go ahead and mark the pentominas with an asterisk and the nonmatominas with a dot for time save in the last stage. Next, let's put our cyan pentomino, which was up, right, down, right. Dot, up, right, down, right. Let's try putting it here first. So I can see that this section perfectly fits the red piece. This section fits the magenta piece if we go dot, right, 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 down, and this fits the side. So this was a particularly easy case. Dot, up, left, 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 and dot, down. The cyan pieces do not share any borders, so this is valid. Diagonals do not count, it's just orthogonal borders. We have our pattern, let's put it away for now, and move on. Next, note down our series of colors, starting from this green. Green, magenta, red, magenta, yellow, blue, cyan, blue, cyan. Back to green. We have nine pieces, so n is equal to nine. And now let's find our order. Easy enough this time, I see cyan, blue, cyan here. Cyan, blue, cyan is here, which means we're going to submit on the green. Now you may have noticed last time that we did not ever need J or L, so I'm only going to note Q and K and Q. K is the middle, which is blue, and Q is the one we're going to submit, which is green. And let's go ahead and submit it. Get rid of this, and we're on to stage three. We have 5 times 7 equals 37. 89 minus 80 equals 6. 31 minus 16 equals 16. 46 minus 37 equals 18. Five times seven minus 37 is two, difference of two. 89 minus 80 minus six, three. 31 minus 16, 16 is one. And then 46 minus 37 minus 18, nine. And is 9, so we start the indexing at 9. And then the next for D, X, M, which are 2, 3, 1. We no longer need these. We no longer need N. We're going to tap it at times, which is 1 time. We're going to start our initial display in our gold configuration. The initial is diamond, heart, club, spade. Next, we need to get the diamond space, which Q was equal to green, and D is equal to 2. So D stands for diamond, so the diamond goes in the second spot. And using the sequence P from the table, we get spade, club, heart. Now we need to make our swamps. I like getting with the edges first, so let's get spade from the right to the left by doing 3, 4, Two, three, one, two. Spade club, uh, club spade, and spade club, heart spade, spade heart, and spade, spade diamond. The first two are already done, so all we need to do is swap three and four, which gives us our gold configuration. So we're going to do three and four. Bravo greater than Romeo greater than Alpha. So Alpha is less than Romeo is less than Bravo. One, two, one, one, two, three. Next, alpha greater than Romeo, which is greater than Bravo, which is Bra Bravo less than Romeo, less than alpha. One, two, one, two, three, one. Next, one and two, alpha and Bravo both less than Romeo which is this. One, two, one, one. I guess the first, the uh, last lop was still less than the first lop. And then finally into the three, four, which is alpha less than Romeo, less than Bravo, alpha less than Romeo, less than Bravo. Alpha 
No, alpha less than Romeo less than... Hold on a second, sorry. So it's alpha less than Romeo less than Romeo. Artists. One, two, one, one, two, three. We have our final configuration of Spade, Diamond, Club, Heart. Let's get offsets. I'm not even going to label these because we don't specifically need them to be labeled. So first filling goes from top right to bottom left, which is two. Then we have empty, which is three. Then top left to bottom right, which is one. Then another top left bottom right, which is one. Then we're going to submit using Romeo is less than Alpha and Bravo, which is one, one, two, one, two. And we're on the final stage. Our piece is the blue piece. And the third in reading order in this blue piece. I placed the blue piece first and it didn't wrap around. So I know at a time that this is the third piece in blue reading order. Because blue is just in there in reading order. So we're going down two spaces to the magenta. Which has walls at north, west, and south. And is a polyom, a pentomino, because it has five spaces. Next, move to the cyan, move down one, two, three. Which has walls to the north and west, not to the east and south. And this was part of the five piece cyan, which was this cyan piece. Next, go down one to the red piece, which has walls at north. West and south, not east, and is not a pentomino. Then we go to this piece, go down one, because that's our last offset, and this has walls on north and south, and is not a pentomino. Then finally, the fifth piece, we never move, and we have walls at the north, west, and south, and this is a pentomino. So we have our walls. Let's compare with the table in the main. North, west, south. North, west, and south. It is a pentomino, so take the underlined. Then we have north and west. Was pentomino, take the underlined. North, west, south. This was not a uh, polyomino, so we take the ununderlined letter. Then north, south. Take papa, which is the un. My letter. Oh, I'm sorry, this was north and west. So northwest with an underline was a hotel. And then finally, northwest south, pentomino, gives us a Sierra. We're going to switch shots. And that is a solved module. Holy moly, this took a while to explain. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And thank you for watching. Have a nice day.